In this video we're going to look at the potential divider and the first thing we will do is to define what is meant by a potential divider. So it is simply a combination of resistors connected in series across a voltage source and what will happen is the resistors that we've connected in series will split the applied potential difference in proportion to their resistances. So the larger resistance will take a larger share of the applied potential difference. So here we have an example of a potential divider. We have 200 ohm resistors, two 200 ohm resistors, connected in series across an applied voltage of 12 volts. And what will happen is they will split that 12 volts between them. Since we have equal resistances here, they will split the applied voltage equally and so what we will have is we will have 6 volts across resistor R2 and there we have a very very simple potential divider circuit. Right what we've done now then is to change the resistor in the R2 position we've replaced the 200 ohm resistor with a 400 ohm resistor. Now then this is going to increase the total circuit resistance to 600 ohms but R2 is obviously making up the greater proportion of that total circuit resistance. It's 400 ohms out of a total of 600 ohms, and therefore it will take the largest, largest share of the 12 volt applied PD. So these resistors will actually divide up, or split really, we should say, split that applied voltage in proportion to their resistances. So if we look at this here, the PD across R2, well R2 is 400 ohms out of a total circuit resistance of 600 ohms. So it is 400 six hundredths of the total circuit resistance and therefore it will take a 400 six hundredths share of our applied PD of 12 volts. Well, let me cancel that down. 4, 6, 12 divided by 6 is going to be 2, 2 times 4 is going to be 8. So that will be 8 volts across the 400 ohm resistor, 400, uh, 4 volts across the 200 ohm resistor. So since R2 basically is a two-thirds share of the total resistance, it takes a two-thirds share of our input voltage, hence 8 volts. We've adjusted the resistances once more. So this time R1 has been replaced with a 100 ohm resistor. And R2, we've got a 500 ohm resistor. Again, we could be asked to work out the potential difference across one or other of these resistors. If we want to work out the PD across R2, well, it's going to come to 10 volts. So R2 is 500 ohms out of a total circuit resistance of 600 ohms. So R2 represents 5 sixths of our total circuit resistance. And that means it will take a 5 sixths share of that total PD. So really all we're doing here to work out the PD across R2 in this potential divider circuit, we're taking the resistance R2, we're dividing that by the total circuit resistance, which is R1 plus R2, and we're multiplying that by um, our input voltage, we call it V in. And that's giving us our output voltage across R2. And there we are, that's it, that's the simple potential divider circuit. One possible use of a potential divider would be to vary the potential difference across a device such as the filament lamp we have in this circuit. So here we have a fixed voltage power supply of 12 volts. We may have a filament lamp here which may be rated at 12 volts, so here if we um, with our variable resistance here, if we reduce the resistance of that variable resistance to zero, then all 12 volts would be across the filament lamp. As we increase the resistance of the variable resistance from zero, what we've effectively got there then is a potential divider circuit, and some of the 12 volts from the battery would be across the, or from the power supply would be across the variable resistance, and the rest would be across the filament lamp. One limitation of this circuit as we've connected it here would be that that 
variable resistance is going to have a maximum resistance usually. So let's say here we've got a variable resistance which we can vary the resistance of between 0 and 20 ohms. Let's suppose our filament lamp here has a resistance. Its resistance will change obviously with temperature but let's say it's around about 20 ohms. Um, obviously when this is at 0 ohms there's no volts across here and we've got all 12 volts then across our 12 volt filament lamp and it's lit to normal brightness. If we increase the variable resistance of this to its maximum value of 20 ohms, what we're going to have is a situation here we've got a 20 ohm variable resistance, we've got a, a filament lamp with a resistance of about 20 ohms as well, and so they will share this 12 volt input voltage between them, and each device here, each um, component will have 6 volts across it, and therefore using this circuit we would be able to vary the PD of that filament across that filament lamp from 12 volts down to, to 6 volts. But that's as far as we'd be able to go unless we can change this variable resistance for something with a, a larger maximum resistance. We're not going to be able to reduce the PD across there to any less than 6 volts because even when we've got this set to its maximum resistance of 20 ohms it's got a resistance then that is comparable to the filament lamp the sharing the voltage equally. We can't with that circuit vary the PD across the filament lamp down to zero. Uh, what we could do though is we could adjust this circuit. If we've got a, a variable resistance here, when you look at a variable resistance it's actually got three contacts on it. It's got a sliding contact and two fixed contacts at the bottom. We can make use of all of those contacts uh, to produce a variable potential divider. So we'll draw that circuit out here next to this one. So here on the right we have our variable potential divider circuit. This time we've taken the variable resistor and we've used the two fixed contacts to connect it to the two terminals of the power supply. So here we've got our DC power supply, 12 volts, and so what we're doing is we're dropping across the whole of that variable resistor there a PD of 12 volts. We've got a potential of 12 volts at this side, and we've got a potential of 0 volts at this side. Now what we're doing then with our filament lamp is we are connecting it between one of the fixed contacts and a sliding contact that we can move up and down the resistance wire of this variable resistor. So here at this point we are just getting a potential difference across our filament lamp which will be equal to the PD that is across this part of the variable resistor. So essentially what we're doing here is we're splitting this variable resistances into two resistances R1 and R2 if you like, and basically call them there R1 and R2 if you want, and our filament lamp is getting the same PD that is across R1, this part of the variable resistance. Now if we move the slider all the way to the left here, what we've got basically is well, we'll be de decreasing the size of R1 to 0, and we're decreasing R2 to the maximum size of the variable resistance. In other words, we're going to be connecting our filament lamp across a zero volt potential difference. Okay, we've got no, we're not connecting across any of the resistance of the variable resistor. So the PD across our filament lamp, if we move the slider right down to the left hand side here, the PD across our filament lamp will be zero. We'll be able to vary the potential difference across the filament lamp all the way down to zero. If we move it right across to the right hand side, then R1 is the maximum resistance of the variable resistor. We've got all 12 volts across there, and R2 would be zero if we move the sliding contact all the way to the right, uh, and therefore we would get the full 12 volts across the filament lamp. So a big advantage here to of this circuit over this one is that with this circuit, we can vary the PD across the filament lamp all the way down to zero. Okay, we have zero volts across it. If we move the slider all the way to the left, with this circuit, because the variable resistance has a maximum resistance, if we're just using it as, a, as basically a rear stat, we've just got the variable resistor in series with the filament lamp, we won't be able to vary the, the PD across the filament lamp all the way down to zero. But we can with this circuit on the right. So you can see this with the apparatus we have set up here. We've got a variable resistor initially in series with the filament lamp, and as we move the slider uh, to the right, it increases the resistance of the variable resistor and so we've got more PD across that and less PD across the filament lamp and you'll see the brightness of the filament lamp decrease 
but it won't decrease all the way down to zero. Even with the variable resistance on its maximum value, you can see we've still got about one volt across the filament lamp. What we will now do is change the connections so that basically we've got it set up as a variable potential divider. And uh, to do this, we've got the power supply now connected across the two fixed contacts. And we've got the filament lamp connected between one of the fixed contacts at the bottom and the sliding contact that you can see at the top. Now, as we move the slider to the right, Now as we move the slider to the right you can see the brightness of the filament lamp increasing because we are connecting the filament lamp across more of the resistance of the variable resistor. Remember here we've got the, the, the potential difference provided by the power supply is dropped across the full resistance of this uh, variable resistor and we will get a proportion of that depending on what proportion of the variable resistance we connect our filament lamp across. So as we move the slider to the right we move it all the way to the right, we're connecting the filament lamp in parallel to the whole resistance of the variable resistor, and so we get the full um, power supply voltage across our filament lamp. As we move the slider back to the left, we will see the potential difference across the filament lamp drop to zero. We'll see the brightness of the filament lamp drop to zero, because as we move it all the way across to the left, we're not connecting the filament lamp across any of the resistance of the variable resistor, and therefore we're getting no volts. So here we have an example of a question involving a potential divider and uh, explain what happens to the reading on the ammeter and voltmeter as light intensity increases. So several marks here. What, what we've got is a light dependent resistor here, an LDR. So first of all, what is going to happen to the resistance of that um, as the light intensity increases? Well, first mark here as light intensity increases as the light intensity increases the resistance of our LDR in this circuit will decrease of course the LDR is simply in series with a fixed resistor so the resistance of the fixed resistor is unchanged if the resistance of the LDR is less then the overall circuit resistance will be less clearly our voltage output from the cell hasn't changed so we've got the same number of volts across a smaller resistance and the result of that is it will drive a larger current remember I equals V over R so a smaller resistance will equal a bigger current now of course using potential divider theory we know that the resistance of the LDR and the resistance of the fixed resistor will split the total volts that we get from our battery if the resistance of the LDR is reduced, of course the fixed resistance is now a larger share of the total circuit resistance and that means it will take a greater proportion of the total potential difference, hence our voltmeter reading will increase. Or we could have said, since we've already said that there will be a larger current in the circuit, of course a larger current through the fixed resistor, uh, V equals IR, the size of the fixed resistor hasn't changed so more current through it means of course that there must be more volts across it. Well here we have another potential divider question so we have a circuit here and we are told it is used to deliver a variable potential difference to an output circuit so here whatever we've got connected in this output circuit is going to get the same um, potential difference as is across the part of this 20 ohm uh, resistor between the sliding contact here the fixed contact at this end and you can see basically by moving the contact left and right between two points A and B we'll call them there at A really we've got the output not connected across any of this resistor and at B we've got it connected across the whole resistance draw a graph to show the change in output potential difference as the sliding contact is moved from A to B and add a scale to the voltage axis well you should be able to see pretty much where we're going to start from at A because if I move this sliding contact right the way across to A I'm not connecting the output circuit across any of this resistance so whatever voltage is dropped across that resistance we're not connecting across any of it okay we're only going to get the same PD as across this connecting lead and assuming that connecting lead has got a negligible resistance we're going to have no volts across our output circuit so we'd expect at A 
start at zero. Now the question is, if we move the slider right across to B, we will get the same potential difference across our output circuit as is across this 20 ohm resistor. Our, our power supply is a 15 volt power supply, but not all 15 volts will be across this 20 ohm resistor because the 20 ohm resistor is also in series with a 5 ohm resistor. So here the 20 ohm and 5 ohm resistors are going to behave like a potential divider and they're going to share out this 15 volts between them. So what we need to work out here really is how many volts are going to be across this 20 ohm resistor and we can do that using potential divider theory. So this is 20 ohms, the total circuit resistance here would be 25 ohms so this resistance as a proportion of the total it's going to be 20 uh, out of a total of 25 ohms so it will take 20 25ths of our input voltage which is 15 volts so the voltage across the 20 ohm will be given by 20 over 25 times 15 which basically is going to be 4 fifths of 15 we cancel the fraction down so we're going to get 12 volts in other words here what we would expect to do really is that the potential difference here will increase such that by the time we've moved the slider right the way across to point B we now have 12 volts um, across the output circuit so using that circuit we can vary the PD from 0 to the full PD across the 20 ohm resistor which will be 12 volts and it will vary uh, pretty much like that Okay, well this is a, an old favourite, so we've got a combination of resistors here and we're asked to determine the reading on the voltmeter. Uh, how are we going to go about doing that? Well, let's have a think about this. We've got four resistors. Really, remember a voltmeter is measuring potential difference, so we need to know what is going to be the potential difference between these two points. Now we've got a 12 volt uh, power supply so we know that there will be 12 volts assuming these leads have got negligible resistance and assuming the power supply of course has got negligible internal resistance which we're, we're going to assume um, so we know that's got no internal resistance all of these circuits we're doing today we're going to assume the power supply has no internal resistance uh, we're going to have zero volts at this point so we've got 12 volts basically dropped across this circuit um, that connecting lead has got no resistance so we're going to still have 12 volts there we're going to have 12 volts across both branches of this parallel network so within each of these parallel uh, within each of these uh, branches here of this parallel network the two resistors will divide up the voltage the potential difference across that branch in proportion to their resistances so if we think about this 100 ohm resistor here, the total resistance of this branch of the circuit will be 400 ohms. 100 plus 300 is 400. So the PD across the 100, the PD across the 100 ohm will be 100 ohms as a fraction of the resistance of that branch of the circuit, which is 400 ohms. So it's 100 four hundredths or one quarter of the resistance of this branch so it will take a one quarter share of the 12 volts which is 3 volts so we've got a 3 volt potential difference across this resistor so if that potential at that point is 12 and there's a 3 volt potential difference the potential at this point here must be 9 volts so we've got a 9 volt potential difference then across this resistor and a 3 volts 12 minus 9 is 3 volt potential difference across the 100 ohm if we do the same thing for the 1600 ohm resistor what we find is we have an 8 volt potential difference across the 1600 ohm resistor so if we've got an 8 volt PD if we've got a 12 volt potential there and the potential difference is going to be 8 volts well that must correspond to a 4 volt potential at this point in the circuit giving a 4 volt potential difference across our 800 ohm resistor so what's the reading on the voltmeter going to be well, our voltmeter will read 5 volts in this case because we have a potential difference between the two points across which it is connected of 5 volts. 9 minus 4 equals 5 volts.
So in this question, the thermistor has a resistance of 1,100 ohms at room temperature. What value of R is required to give an output of 6 volts at room temperature? Well, the output here is the voltage that is across our parallel combination of thermistor. You recognize the circuit symbol for a thermistor here. And that's in parallel with resistance R. So whatever potential difference is across this parallel network, our output is connected across the same thing. So that will be the voltage of the output. We need to know what that is. Ah, right. Well, OK, how are we going to do that then? Well, we know that um, we need 6 volts across there then. Now we've got a 9 volt EMF here. So potential divider theory tells us that this parallel network and the 400 ohm or 0.4 kilo ohm resistor are going to split that 9 volts between them. So straight away for our output is going to be 6 volts. I know that we're going to need 3 volts here. Well, there will be 3 volts. The rest of the voltage will be across that series resistor. So let's, let's write that down here. Let's recognize, make it clear we recognize there's 3 volts going to be across the 400 ohm, 0.4 kilo ohm resistor. When output equals 6 volts. Okay, well, does that help us? Well, yes, it does. Um, because what we can then do is work out what current must go through that 400 ohm resistor. In other words, what current is actually flowing from our power supply. So we know that V equals IR and I equals V over R. So if we're to have 3 volts across a 400 ohm resistor, we can find um, the current. And there we are, we have got a 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3 amp, that's 7.5 milliamps through that resistor. And of course we know we've going to have, well, we, we know we've got 6 volts across the uh, thermistor because both of these components here will have 6 volts across them. So we can also work out the current in the thermistor. So basically we have 7.5 milliamps flowing from our power supply. And we know that flowing through the thermistor, essentially we've got 5.5 milliamps. So presumably, the other 2 milliamps, the difference between these two currents, must flow through resistor R. Now then, for resistor R, and uh, there we are. So for resistor R, once we know the current here coming from the power supply through the 400 ohm resistor, 7.5 milliamps, 5.5 milliamps comes through the thermistor. So basically the other 2 milliamps, 2.05 times 10 to the minus 3 amps, if we work it out to 3 sig figs, goes through resistor R. We know that there will have to be 6 volts there across resistor R, the same as across the output circuit because they're in parallel. Parallel have got the same voltage across them. If we know the voltage and the current, we can work out the resistance. And there you go. Right, we've got one final problem on potential dividers here. We have a circuit with a 9 volt EMF uh, from the battery pack, negligible internal resistance. And we've got two resistors and we've got two filament lamps in this circuit. The rating of the filament lamps, well this one's 6 volts, 1.5 watts, and this one 3.5 volts, 0.7 watts. We know that both bulbs, uh, both lamps are lit to normal brightness and we're asked to determine the voltmeter reading along with the resistances R1 and R2. Okay, well, let's have a think. How are we going to do that? We know that this lamp, to be lit to normal brightness, must have 6 volts across it. and Therefore, there will have to be 6 volts dropped across between points B and A. So both branches of this parallel network, they're in parallel, same voltage across them. So this branch here will have 6 volts, this branch here will have 6 volts across it in total. So what we know here if we've got 6 volts across the parallel network, presumably the other 3 volts must be across resistor R. So just using simple potential divider theory, 6 volts across the parallel network, subtract that away from the total PD across the whole circuit, and what you're left with is uh, 3 volts across resistor R. So the parallel network and resistor R2 are sharing uh, total volts between them.
Okay, determine the resistances R1 and R2. Well, we know the voltage across R2 certainly, and we also know what voltage will be across R1 because there's three and a half volts across this lamp when it's lit to normal brightness and six volts across the parallel network. The other two and a half volts must be across R1, so we can write that down. So again, it's using potential divider theory. The resistance of the lamp and the resistance of R1 are sharing the six volts that's across A and B. And dividing it up between them, three and a half volts across there, two and a half volts across here. Now, what we can do is we can work out the current in each of these branches because that will be the current in these two lamps. So let's work out the current in each of these lamps. Right, so we've worked out the current in each of the lamps. In the 6 volt lamp, we're going to have a current of 0.25 amps. And in the 3.5 volt lamp, we're going to have a current of 0.2 amps. And what that means, those two currents are going to join together here at this branch. And the current flowing through R2 then is going to be 0.2 plus 0.25, which will be 0.45 amps using circuit laws and current coming into a branch equals the total current coming out again. We can now use V equals IR to work out the resistances R1 and R2. So in R1 we know that there are two and a half volts across it. Two and a half plus three and a half makes the six volts across the parallel network. So two and a half volts across R1. We know that because it's in series with the three and a half volt filament lamp Whatever current goes through that filament lamp will also go through R1, so we know the current through it. We know V, we know I, we can work out resistance. Similarly for R2, we already know the reading on the voltmeter is 3 volts, we worked that out earlier. And we know the total current, or the current passing through here, must be 0.25 plus 0.2 is 0.45 amps. And again, potential difference over current gives us the resistance. And there we go, problem solved. Here's just a follow-up question then. Explain what will happen to the brightness of the 3.5 volt lamp if the 6 volt lamp breaks. Okay, so basically if the filament of the 6 volt lamp burns out and that lamp fails, it breaks, what will happen to the brightness of this one? Okay, well let's just think about that for a moment and how are we going to explain that? So this lamp breaks, how is that going to affect the resistance of this parallel network? Well, basically, if you remember, resistors in parallel, the formula is 1 over R equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Now, basically here, if this is the resistance of one of the branches, then that resistance is suddenly becoming, becoming infinite, basically. It's not conducting anymore. So what will happen is the overall resistance of this part between A and B, the effective resistance between A and B, will be increased okay? because we're losing that branch. No current can pass through here anymore because that filament lamp is blown. If you think about it here, the resistance of this parallel network is simply the resistance of this branch here, R1, plus the resistance of this filament lamp. So what we can say here is that effective resistance between A and B increases. Okay, normally when you connect resistors in parallel, the effective resistance is less than the resistance of the individual branches. Okay, connecting components in parallel reduces the overall resistance. So if we lose that parallel network by losing that branch there, the resistance, the effective resistance of the circuit between A and B is increased. Now using potential divider theory then, since the resistance between A and B now represents a larger proportion of the total circuit resistance, it is going to take a greater share of that 9 volt total PD. Basically the effective resistance between A and B and R2 are splitting the 9 volt EMF, but the biggest resistance will take the biggest share. They're dividing it up in proportion to their resistances. So if A and B now have got a larger resistance between A and B, then you're going to take a, a greater share of the 9 volts across that resistance. And the result of that is more volts across our 
filament lamp and therefore its brightness will increase. So there we are. More volts across the 3.5 volt lamp uh, and an increased brightness then for that lamp. 